Hi everybody, I'm Kevin. Welcome back to the Museum of Handheld Computers. Uh, I figured I would try to do some unboxing uh, live. I've got a bunch of different boxes for different devices I've ordered, and I really just wanted to give you guys, you know, a peek into some of the interesting things I think I'm going to be photographing, possibly cleaning, restoring on the channel. So let's get going. If you have any comments, please feel free to drop them in. Um, Instagram is telling my followers that I'm doing this, so that's cool. I'm going to play with some buttons down here and see what happens. Nope. Nope. Never mind. Cool. So yeah, Instagram's just kind of getting it kicked off. If anybody tunes in, I can certainly answer questions. I mean, things I'm looking for are like, yeah, if you wanted to know if I was going to maybe dive into a device a little deeper, get some history on it, take some really amazing pictures of it, um, you know, do any restoration, that sort of thing. I'm happy to take a look at it. But yeah, I just figured tonight I would go through and do some different things like uh, unbox these devices that I've got handy and yeah, and go from there really. So let's get started. Uh, first box, big old FedEx box. These are nice and easy. So let's see what's inside this guy. And, you know, I'm purchasing devices to add to the collection because I really just want this whole collection to be something that really captures handheld computing and the history of it. So I think it's just, I think it's just super fascinating. Awesome. So let's take a look in here. Very cool. So Kindle, uh, this is an earlier generation Kindle, um, but it doesn't, it's not the earliest ones that had the keyboard. Uh, those ones were, were pretty awesome too. And I've got a couple of those in the collection, but this one's got this little cool D-pad down at the bottom. Uh, so that's a little bit different before they were really doing touch screens. Cause you can see here, this is also kind of page forward, page back. Um, cool. No, thanks a lot for, for checking in, dude. That's awesome. Really appreciate it. Hope you are, uh, happy and healthy wherever you are with all this coronavirus stuff. But, uh, yeah. Come back anytime. So yeah, so Kindles, e-readers in general, I think are super interesting part of computing history when it comes to handhelds. So we'll be taking a look at all these different ones. I've got a few different ones here. I'll actually go to the next one, which is, um, this is one that I picked up in my neighborhood, so it's not an unboxing, but uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Nook. So this is Barnes & Noble, and these are really, I think, super cool. And I, have, I can't wait to fire it up because it's e-reader on top and LCD on the bottom. So it's got this mini LCD screen here that's full color and a touch screen. Uh, and then you have the e-ink on top of that. So super, super funky. Talk to you later. Take care, man. Um, yeah, so I just think it's super interesting device. I'm excited to take a look at that one as well. All right, let's go. More boxes. This one needs an actual knife. Yeah, any questions you have about anything that you see here, any questions you have about, you know, my goals for this this channel and this account, totally open to answering those. I do everything down in my basement. Sorry if this is loud. I can't can't quite tell, but bubble wrap is bubble wrap, that's for sure. Well, it's kind of e-reader theme. Um, I have a couple Kindles, but I was trying to fill out some of that collection. So I think this one's the same generation as one we were just taking a look at. Uh, it's silver instead of black. But what I always try to do is I try to suss out, you know, exactly what um, what generation everything is, and uh, and also what years everything came out. Um, and so here's a Barnes and Noble Nook. This one's just the straight e-reader. Um, they had some really cool designs on their e-readers. So. Pretty excited for those. Earlier Kindle with the uh, keyboard. I love the keyboard on these. I think they're super, super cool. They had a the really large one as well. It was just like, I don't know, maybe half again larger than this one. Um, but that's a pretty early, early Kindle e-reader. Uh, another Kindle with a keyboard, but again, it starts to introduce that D-pad as well. So that's super cool. I love things that come into the collection in like carrying cases and things like that. It just makes storing them a lot easier and, and kind of, you know, I feel a little, little better about storing them that way. Same thing, Kindle and then Kindle. So some of these I may end up, you know, giving away, selling, doing different, different things with, but 
All right, next box. But yeah, one of my goals with the channel is to make sure that, um, you know, I'm giving a lot of these older devices their due because a lot of times you'll, you'll see pictures of them and things like that, but I really want to get through and like take awesome pictures of all these things. All right, so Nintendo DS, this was a fun one. Um, even though I have a DS, you know, it's kind of interesting to see some of the different flavors, like different colors and things like that. Um, this one's got a little bit of, I don't know, some goop on it. It feels surficial, so that's nice. can probably clean that off in a future video. Um, yeah, overall, though, this this feels really good. Uh, and this is just a DS Lite, so there's no, you know, not a not a 2DS, not a, not a DSi, which had the camera and things like that. This is just a DS Lite, so kind of that second generation of Nintendo DS. And, uh, yeah, it looks to be in really good shape, which is super fun. Um, I think cleaning this one up will be really awesome. It came with a bunch of games. That was what I was interested in. I mean, I think these are really bizarre. Victorious Hollywood Arts debut. Um, I mean, it's really kind of weird because these are all very, I would say, girl-centric, um, as well as the color of the device is pink. Um, but, again, I think it's kind of interesting to see how games are created, especially that are kind of focused on gender. Um so yeah, so that's going to be kind of an interesting lot uh, to take a look through. Awesome. And yeah, my name's Kevin, so I'm, uh, I've been collecting handheld computers probably for about 10 years. And didn't really get this started until just this year. Um, mostly because I was, again, it was about time. I've got some interesting things in the collection, and I really just want to share them. You know, I want to connect with people who are as fascinated about what I think is fascinating about handheld computers, which is that they're just always with us. They're ubiquitous. They're kind of everywhere. And they really have been for a long time, since the at least the 80s. PS Vita. So I think this one is a first-gen Vita. So let's take a look. Yep. One PCH 1001. So I have a couple other Vitas, the slightly newer ones, um, but I heard and read about the screen on this one being pretty fantastic and the whole thing just generally being a bit over-engineered. So I'm pretty excited to take a look at that. I bought this one um, mainly because I looked at it and there was like bubbling on the screen, but as far as I can tell, it's a screen protector. So this is going to look, uh, I think, going to be a fantastic looking device. Everything else I see on here is a little bit of kind of smooge in that uh, bumper up on the upper right hand side a little tape on the back but all in all some scratches not not too bad some scratches up in the corner all in all though this is a really good looking ps vita so this is going to be a really fun one to play with um you know one of the things that i think is humbling about handheld computers is i mean i felt like i was pretty into handhelds when i was younger um in the 90s and things like that and especially the early 2000s but you know I didn't have a lot of money or anything like that, so it was really interesting to... It's really interesting now to see a lot of devices and things like that that I just didn't experience. So I'll definitely be cracking open some of the video games and things like that that I've never... Just never played, never experienced. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this one was pretty hard to pass up. Uh, it's a Palm Zire. So one of those early, early PDAs. And the great thing about this is that it's literally still in its packaging... Uh, yeah, and never been opened, so the packaging is dirty, but I think the interior is uh, essentially mint, which is pretty hilarious. Uh, and I'm not really precious about things being mint. My son got a hold of a iPod mini box that I had, and at first I was upset, and then I was like, it's just a box. I really don't care. Because um, again, I think the lived-in condition of a lot of these devices really matters too. Like, I'm not going for mint, but um, once in a while I guess it's kind of fun. Uh, fun to see. Yeah, I'm really interested in the stories behind a lot of these devices. I think, especially when you go back, like, why people had devices, how they used them. You know, I had a, I had, an, I had one of those Palms that had Wi-Fi, and it was kind of an earlier PDA that had Wi-Fi. And the cool thing with it was that, um, you know, I was able to take notes in my college courses with it without having to have a huge laptop or anything like that, which even in the, you know, 90s, people didn't use laptops in in their classes because the batteries didn't last and they were just massive and expensive. So I, I love the stories behind a lot of these devices. These are super cool. So in the MP3 player world, um, iPods were certainly the big thing and then Zune, but Creative, 
the company that, you know, used to, and probably still does, I've never looked, uh, you know, used to make like sound cards and things like that, made MP3 players and media players. So I have a Creative Zen that's a, a big kind of LCD screen one, but I didn't have any of the ones that were just really, you know, very iPod-like. So these are pretty cool. I'm going to be excited to take a look at these. And I'll probably put them back in the bag that I got them in because that would be an easier way to make sure that they stay in decent shape. These look really good. Yeah, these look fantastic. So again, MP3 players, super fascinating part of the history. Last unboxing, if you go over and look up the Handheld Museum on YouTube, you'll see that I did some some other unboxing and um, unboxed some Zune media players, which I think are super cool. And again, I never really played with them, so they're part of the history, but they're also something that I'm excited to learn about the pluses and minuses. So I may even do reviews of those kind of devices. We'll see. Um, I don't know if I want to do vintage device reviews, but I may just more do, you know, my impressions of them rather than what I would consider review. Awesome. Piles of bubble wrap. And I'll tell you what, I appreciate the packaging. Almost everybody does when it comes to anywhere I might buy a device, but um, gosh, I really love the ones that use paper <laughs> because... It's getting harder and harder to recycle this kind of plastic. Um, all right. Oh, yeah. Cool. So Toshiba PDA. Uh, it's got this crazy battery extension on the back of it, which is hilarious. Uh, but this is a pocket PC, so this is kind of dealing in those Windows CE days. Got an SD card slot there. And compact flash, I'm guessing. Up there. You know, styluses. Styluses used to be how people used PDAs, and then they changed when it came to uh, touchscreens, and now they're kind of back again with with some of the Samsungs and with uh, the iPad Pros, things like that. But yeah, Pocket PC. That's going to be a fun one. No idea how to figure out if people are watching, but it's okay. I'm just kind of testing out Instagram Live, see if it's see if it's any fun. And I'll post this on YouTube after the fact. So, oh, wait, like I said, just look up handheld handheld museum over on YouTube, and you will find me. Look for the green logo. Ah, oh, yeah. See, this one's cool. Just talking about not bubble wrap. Shredded boxes. That's awesome. Oh, man, bubble wrap. Well, whatever. Can't win them all. And bags. <laughs> wow, yeah, this one's a kind of inception. Cardboard bubble wrap bag. Cable. And more bubble wrap. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to photograph for this week. Um, got a couple ideas, but... Alright, so... A few iPods. And again, I didn't really own iPods, so this is kind of, for me, fascinating to just take a look at the form factors and, and even the progression of... Uh, of everything iPod. These are Nanos. So these are all pretty much the same vintage. I'd have to double check all the exact uh, model numbers, but these came, these came fairly late in the iPod Nano game. I don't remember about when, but I'm guessing probably around, I don't know if it was 2005, maybe a little later than that even. Yeah. Great colors on these. It's really hilarious, though, that they had cameras. So I'd never actually known that. Um, so I'm pretty excited to fire one of these up and experience kind of the camera on one of these. Awesome. All right. Let's look at this one. And it's really funny because you know some of the earlier iPods didn't have even the 30-pin connector. They had a uh, FireWire connection. And uh, so you 
you kind of go from firewire to 30 pin to lightning which is totally fine but it's obviously just a bunch of wires you gotta have around if you want to play with the devices and see if they're working cool Ugh. all right so another another palm you can totally recognize these if you ever experienced palms i mean look at that that's like a giant power brick a huge long cable that cable uh, that looks like it has an extender on it uh and then you have the stand i mean these things early on these palms and everything did not have wi-fi so and even if they did they weren't they weren't updating and things like that so the tungsten definitely had Wi-Fi. Uh, it's got a gargantuan screen protector on this one too, which is kind of nice. But yeah, this is a tungsten T. Um, I think I, I have a couple tungstens, um, and I'm not sure if I have the T, but that'll be a fun one to play with, and there's even software for that one included. I'm not going to be able to install that. Don't have a CD-ROM drive anymore, guys. All right. Good things come in small packages. And I genuinely don't know what's in each of these. I have been ordering here and there, and usually just kind of wait until I have a pile of them to, to really go through and uh, and take a look and see what came through. And then, you know, from there, I'm just cataloging things, photographing them, and getting started with videos. So that'll be pretty fun. Got this one from eBay, obviously. A lot of packaging so much packaging wow it's like bag within bag within bag i don't even know where to start oh this one has a little little grabby tabby grab tabby doesn't work very well either oh my gosh it's like a bag wrapped around itself all right so neo geo pocket uh, i'd never played the pocket neo geo so again this is going to be a new one for me double a batteries it's really light it feels frankly kind of cheap well that's interesting can you hear that that's super interesting um so i don't have any games for this so that's just gonna be another interesting one to kind of go down when it comes to the kind of the handheld gaming um uh, branch of the handheld computer tree that's awesome Super fun. Sorry about the wobble. Big light box. Yeah, and if you ever want to, you know, you can check out handheld computer music, handheldmuseum.org. Um, that'll be kind of the central catalog of all the devices. And right now, it's you know, it's a fairly simple site, um, but I'm hoping to upgrade it so that. It really serves as more of a, a database of all these different items. Right now, it's it's mostly a blog, WordPress. So I wouldn't say it's it's the best um, for organizing the data of all the different devices. But yeah, I'll be building something that's probably a little bit a little bit more data centric, so it's easier to kind of look around and and uh, and learn about these devices. And again, I'm hoping to learn from you about devices that you've used, and especially if you had devices and are not a collector, um, and, you know, and just what you, what you use them for, how they impacted your life. Um, I mean, I've got lots of stories, but when I was a little, when I was a kid, I really wanted an Atari, Atari Lynx, and, uh, awesome, a little iPod mini, four gigabyte, amazing. Yeah, I wanted an Atari Lynx when I was a kid, and I decided to, when I was saving up for it, uh, instead of saving up to buy the Atari Lynx, I saved up for a game first, and I bought an Atari Lynx game, and then I was pretty locked into buying the whole thing, so it was a real motivator for actually getting the full thing, uh, and I ended up getting that second gen Atari Lynx, which I still have, and so it was kind of the stubbier one, but yeah, it was a pretty fun fun thing to get as a kid uh, i skipped the whole game boy thing so i never had a game boy until uh no, i never had a game boy until like i got the ds light oh yeah 
So this is just an arcade flashback portable. So I'm not opposed to looking at modern, you know, handhelds because they're still part of the history. Um, but I thought this would be a really interesting one. And if nothing else, um, I have a four-year-old. I thought this might be super fun for my four-year-old to play with some old Atari games, um, classic games. Uh, so I'll charge that up and, and see if he's going to play with that. But I did have an Atari when I was a little kid, like an Atari 2600. So super, super old school stuff. Yeah, and I think it's super interesting just to see what, you know, some cheap stuff that's coming out. There's a lot of emulator kind of base devices. I think that's valid, you know? I have a lot of those old LCD games from, like, Radio Shack and things like that. So those are definitely part of the collection because, again, that's handheld. That's computers. And I think especially in the gaming aspect, that's pretty fascinating stuff. All right. It's a Palm One. This is a little later when Palm changed their name to Palm One. So it's Desire 31. Uh, as far as I know, these are still black and white. Uh, I never, like I said, with a lot of these things, I didn't own one of these. But I think these are still black and white. So I'll have to kind of look through that. Get a big sticker on the back. So again, sometimes I'll be doing some cleanings. I don't know about full repairs. Yeah, this is just stuck on. So I'm going to have to you know, clean that off and kind of fix it. But... Palms are super interesting. So I'm trying to keep this short. Got two more boxes. I know that's a lot. Uh, but like I said, I just wait until I have a few different things uh, piled up before I make these kind of videos. Uh, and, you know, if unboxings aren't interesting, just let me know. Like, what else would you like to see? Uh, I'm hoping to do videos where I actually straight up just start using devices, play with them. Because uh, I, you know, there's a lot that I've never done uh, and messed around with, so... Super interested in that. Always have to check everything to make sure there's no, no cables or anything like that hidden somewhere inside. Most of the time I don't mind the bubble wrap, but it's also the having clear tape on top of bubble wrap that makes it a bit difficult to see where I can cut so I don't just jam a knife right into a device. Oh yeah. So there's a nice early Kindle, not the first gen, but gorgeous, really cool product design. I love these giant buttons. I know everything's touchscreen now, but why, why, you know, when you can just put giant buttons that are super tactile. Awesome. All right. Last one for the night. For the night here where I'm at. And like I said, I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, this coronavirus stuff is really interesting. I'm working from home with my family, taking care of my kiddo, working. It's super stressful. And just know that, you know, you are not alone. It is hard. And I just hope that you and your family and your friends are healthy. Staying well. Staying employed. That really matters. Cool, last one. Yeah, there's a lot of e-readers e-readers in this bunch so again early kindle awesome so that's it for tonight um like i said i'm kevin this is the handheld computer museum please uh, follow us and if you want to hit us up on youtube too we're going to start doing some things there just look up handheld museum and uh thanks a lot take care